So in this video, we're going to look at how to do two fairly simple calculations, which are unlikely to come up as questions in their own right on a GCSE paper. But if you're not happy doing these questions, then you're unlikely to be able to access some of the harder questions like calculating yield. So the first of these kinds of questions is going to ask you, what is the mass of a certain number of moles of a substance? Now, a mole is just a big number. So in the same way that you can have a million or half a million or five million, you can have a mole or 10 moles or 0.2 of a mole. Now, the actual number a mole is approximately 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And what that number represents is the number of atoms that you find in the relative atomic mass of an element in grams. So that sounds really complicated, but all it means is that if you take an element like, say, carbon, we know has a relative atomic mass of 12. If you take 12 grams of carbon, then it will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon in it. And likewise, if you take 16 grams of oxygen, which has a relative atomic mass of 16, then you will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of oxygen. And it also works for compounds. So if I know that the relative formula mass of water is 18, if I take 18 grams of water, then that will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water in it. So the maths involved here is quite simple. We've got a little formula triangle down here to help us. Some people find this really helpful, some people don't, so use it or don't, it's up to you. If you're going to use it, if we're working out a mass, we want to cover up mass and see what's left. So we're going to take either the relative atomic mass or the relative formula mass, depending on whether we're using an element or a compound, and we're going to times it by the number of moles that we're interested in. So I've already said that the relative atomic mass of carbon is 12. And you'll see that this time I've actually put some units on that. So 12 grams per mole. Every mole of carbon weighs 12 grams. So to calculate the mass, I'm going to take that AR and I'm going to times it by the number of moles. And because it's a mass, I'm going to express my answer in grams. Question two is going to be exactly the same. So I take my periodic table and I find the relative atomic mass of aluminium, which is 27. Again, I'm going to cover up mass because that's what I'm trying to work out and do the relative atomic mass times the number of moles. And it doesn't matter that it's not an integer. It doesn't matter that 7.1 isn't a whole number. That's completely fine because a mole is a really, really big number. So it's completely reasonable for you to have less than a whole mole. Now for the next two questions, we obviously don't have an element, so we can't just look up on the periodic table how much carbon dioxide weighs. First, I need to calculate the relative formula mass, which is what we did in the previous video. So in order to do that, I'm going to need the relative atomic masses of carbon and oxygen. So once I have the relative atomic mass of those two elements, then I can put them together to calculate the MR. And once I've done that, my process is exactly the same as before. I've got 0.5 moles of something that weighs 44 grams per mole, so I just times those two numbers together. For question four, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Start by looking up calcium and oxygen. Thank you. 
use those two numbers and the formula to work out what the relative formula mass will be. And then following the same process I followed before, I'm going to multiply that relative formula mass by the number of moles. So this second type of question is basically the opposite of the first type of question. Again, we've got the same formula triangle there, but now we're trying to work out how many moles of a certain substance are there in a known mass. So since I'm trying to work out the number of moles, that's what I'm going to cover up. And my formula triangle tells me I'm going to do mass divided by either AR, if we're looking at an element, or MR, formula mass, if we're looking at a compound. So. My first one is going to be quite straightforward. I just take my periodic table, find iron, and it's here, and the relative atomic mass at 556. So, mass divided by relative atomic mass. gives me an answer of 4 moles, and as you can see, I've abbreviated moles to just M-O-L, which is the standard abbreviation. Now the next six questions are going to be slightly more complicated, because we're going to need to work out what the relative formula mass is before we can work out the rest of this calculation. If you're unsure about that, look back at the previous video, which taught you how to calculate relative formula mass. So, Let's assume for now that you're comfortable working out relative formula mass, and I'm just going to do that bit really quite quickly. So, once we know relative formula mass, the rest of the process is exactly the same as it would be for an element. We're still doing mass divided by MR. So in this instance, 200 grams divided by 100 grams per mole. We'll do one more example together and then you can pause the video and have a go at the last four on your own. So, for titanium chloride, to work out the relative formula mass, we're going to need to know the um, relative atomic mass of titanium, which is 48, and of chlorine, which is 35.5. I can see I've got one atom of titanium, four atoms of chlorine. And so again, for my calculation, I cover up moles, I'm doing mass divided by MR. Now for these first three questions, we have all got integer numbers of moles, but just remember that a mole, it's like a million, you can have half a mole, you can have 1.2 moles, so you could very easily come up with a number that is not a whole number, and if you do, that's absolutely fine. So now you're going to pause the video, try to do the next four on your own, and we'll come back and look at the answers. So, if we now check your answers for 4 through 7, you've hopefully worked out that the relative formula mass of methane is 16 grams per mole, 
and therefore when we do 176 divided by 16, we get 11 moles. You've worked out that the relative formula mass of sodium hydroxide is 40 grams per mole, and so there we're going to have 10 and a half moles. We said that's absolutely fine, you can always have um, a fraction of a mole, that's completely fine and normal. Um, then when we look at arsenic pentoxide, you should have worked out that its relative formula mass is going to be 230 grams per mole. And so there, because we've got less than 230 grams, we've ended up with a decimal. We've got 0.3 moles. And finally, with iron oxide, we've got a relative formula mass of 160 grams per mole. And so 480 grams is 3 moles of that.